in the car earlier, you were going to tell a story about a baby head. Get the share. My son loves that story because I've told it many times over the years because it's all true and uh, yeah you could say it's sort of embarrassing but I've come to grips with it. Uh, last time I told it to my son he asked me to tell him the story again and I was telling him the story and about three quarters of the way through he was giggling so hard and gasping for air and said shut up stop stop and I was like what and, you know I would just say a sentence and he'd be like I can't breathe and you know he'd say I got I'm seeing flashes of light I can't breathe and I'm like all right because I've, I've had that happen to me where I've been laughing especially the story where I stood on a friend of mine's testicles while he was in the hot tub by accident but the baby head story goes back to the early 90s when I was a student at UAB. And I had been constipated probably since Sunday. And the events unfolded on Friday. Uh, during the course of the week, I took a lot of laxatives, uh, drank a lot of prune juice, Ugh. and. Uh, Nothing really happened. Uh, you know, I, let me explain. I had the urge to purge, you know, but nothing could get out. It, it was an impaction, I think is the medical term for it, where you have this solid kryptonite ball in your bowel and your colon, and it just could not escape. And during the course of the week, uh, when I did try, uh, stuff would squirt around it, think a bowling ball, and liquid going around it. And so that was not very satisfying. And I never thought of going to the hospital, which I probably should have done, because by Friday I was feeling pretty horrible. Uh, if, you, if you've ever gone a couple of days without going and you feel horrible, multiply that times three. And I remember uh, my friend Derek was there. I said, uh, and he goes, you should really uh, try harder. And I was like, mm, try harder, sure. So I go into the public restroom at the university. And it was a late Friday afternoon. So there weren't a lot of people around, which was good because I didn't want a lot of people coming in and conversing and hearing me because yes I was moaning and groaning and making horrible sounds but I was in the handicap stall and the reason that's important is it had the two railings on either side that I could grab onto and uh, bore down you know like trying to give birth kind of thing but it was an unholy thing and I just remember straining so hard that you could see flashes and you're feeling dizzy and you're groaning and every now and again somebody would come in to pee and I'd, I'd stop pushing because I didn't want to make those sounds until I was alone. Finally, you know, I, I had been to the restroom many times that week with nothing to show for it and I decided, you know, hell or high water, whether I die like Ellis Presley on the toilet or not, something's going to happen. So I'm holding on to the handicap rails. I got a death grip on these suckers and I'm just going, and I'm seeing flashes and I felt something moving. I'm like, yeah, I'm so excited because it's the first time something's moved in a while and I just keep bearing down, bearing down. It hurt. It hurt a lot. And when it finally came out, if you've ever seen World War II documentaries where they drop death charges to sink subs and it shoots up the giant geyser of water, it was very much like that. Because when it came out, it didn't just go plop. It was like 
a meteor hitting the ocean and it just went boo which was bad because I was like ah but it got worse because the water in the toilet bowl splashes up and soaks every part of my body below the waist and I can feel the, the, the ah, I'm, I'm shaking you know like like a leaf I'm just shaking because I finally got this thing out and I was just like hey. and I don't know how long I sat there shaking but finally I was like okay I'm alive and I remember uh, this is really gross uh, like the whole story isn't gross you should probably put a disclaimer before it this is a gross story finally I managed to get to my feet and uh, unwinding the toilet paper and I, I look into the bowl of the toilet and get it, there's water all over the floor around the toilet from where it went kaboosh no exaggeration and I look inside the toilet because I have this I don't know, it's like when you see roadkill, you generally try not to look at it, but I always end up going, ew. So I look in there, and, and no exaggeration, it was like a softball sized thing in the water. Um, caramel colored, very smooth, I think it had been worn away by all the liquid squirting around it during the week. And for all the world it looked like an enormous baby head just this enormous baby's head like a newborn baby's head and I, I don't mean you could see eyes and a nose because that would have I'd never recovered but I just remember it was about the size a little larger than a softball and my only thought was to get that out my butthole, you can bleep that, had to expand to this size, which terrified me then and amazes me today. So the, the toilet exit was about this big. The baby head was about this big. So I didn't even try to flush it because I was like, yeah, all that's going to do is overflow the toilet and yeah doesn't help anyone so I, I clean myself up and I'm still trembling as I get back to where my friend is and he's like how'd it go I said I gave birth to a two or three pound baby head and he, he didn't believe me of course and I said it's still in the toilet down the hall you can go take a look and he goes okay and I just remember him going and I was just still shuddering and recovering a few minutes later, he comes back one. Good God, how are you still alive? And I said, I, I, I don't know. He goes, why are your pants wet? I said, well, and then I explained about the death charge going off and my ass getting soaked. Anyway, that's the baby head story that my son finds so amusing that when I tell it to him, even though he's heard it a few times, he, he starts doing that gasping laugh where it hurts so much you can't breathe. So, now you've heard it, and I bet you don't forget it. Okay, go away now. <laughs>